Hello everybody, um, this is Ramjet here. I am doing a very quick video on how to assemble a, uh, a load cell kit uh, for the T3PAs and the T3PA Pros. So look, you're going to have to excuse me, I've got, a, um, I've got the, my old phone on a selfie stick gaffer taped to the side of my table and this is not my normal streaming environment. So um, it's very, very ghetto. But uh, hopefully you can look past that and um, get a get a general idea for what I'm doing. So um, this is the uh, the existing load cell uh, brake mod that I've been making. Um, I use this on my actual rig. Um, I don't actually use this mod because I got the T3PA, not the T3PA Pro. Um, this was originally designed by uh, somebody else. <laughs> I should have check the name before I started doing this. Um, apologies that I can't remember your name straight off the top of my head, but I have made some modifications apart from just putting a logo on the front. Um, the uh, the new version of this actually has a, here we go, here's a better look at it. It's got a convex side on the inside. Now let's see if I can get some better lighting here. Um, and what this is supposed to do is protect the cabling. Um, where's my other one? Where did I put my other one? I'll give you the idea. Anyway, so this slides off and protects the cabling in this little channel here that allows the cabling to go up the inside and not get crimped and broken. Yet still has all of the uh, the connecting points here to make sure that it doesn't doesn't wiggle from side to side. So when you're pushing the brake pedal, it stays solid and straight, and the cables are protected. Now I'm just passing the cable through. Um, the inside here very quickly to um, plug in and the reason for that is following the direction of the load cell this is a there you go, 20 kilo load cell um, and the idea is that you'd be pushing down on this section here so this mounts on the on the brake pedal and as the brake pedal comes down you'll be pushing your heel onto here and you'll, you'll be pushing down in this section. So follow the, follow the direction of the arrow and you can't really go wrong. Um, so I've actually started assembling one and the, the kit comes in two parts. Well, three if you include the, um, the, the pro mount. Um, there is um, a carrier. This is where the Arduino goes in here and the load cell, the load cell actually plugs in through, uh, through the slot here and you've got the, the cover. Now, I'll give you a quick idea of how the cover works. So this whole, um, whole mechanism is actually just sort of self-locked in. And I'll just pull the, the load cell out and the whole top section slides off, revealing, ta-da! So we've got a HX711 load cell amplifier sitting in on the top. And as you can see, it's, oh, there you go. As you can see, it's flipped over and the, um, Oh, well, can I put a light on? No, I'm going to tap this, see if I can put the light on. Nope. That's autofocus. That's a pain. All right. Um, so, yeah, I've got the Arduino basically flipped underneath the, the load cell. So, um, and there's a push button here. Focus, please. Thank you. And the push button here will actually, uh, is for zeroing and uh, recalibrating. So zero and the bind button. So when you come to press, uh, to bind the brake pedal to a game, um, the binding will actually uh, automatically push the pedal for you um, so you don't have to modify your actual brake pedal. So this thing just sits on the outside of your T3PAs and your Pros and you don't actually have to hack into any cabling whatsoever. So anyway, as you can see, this um, basically locks in place, holds the whole thing straight and this then just plugs into that little four pin header like so. So. Um, I'll tidy this up with a very small cable tie, but I mean, you know, it's a load cell. They, they all look like this, kind of, how else can you do it, really? Um, I would like to pull the cable in through the bottom here and look, maybe later revisions I might do that. But for the most part, when your big brake pedal is pushing on here, there's, there's, there's no chance you'll damage any of this. So that's, I think that's actually quite fine. And of course, you've got the, uh, the button and the uh, USB lead here. So that's how it looks. Um, this is actually a uh, like a like a um, a draw handle, believe it or not. It just happens to be the right length. It also happens to be four millimeters internal diameter. 
So it's a uh, threaded for four millimeters and comes with the right size screw. So I'll be very quick uh, because I'm running out of time left on my phone to record this. Um, right, so here's a part built version of it. I've got a small four mil bolt and a the original handle um, screw. And the idea is this will just screw onto here and like so and just all the way up that locks in place and then you stick these little rubber foam pads on top um, which I don't have at hand because I did a quick tidy up because this place was a mess before it got, <laughs> it got set up for a video um, anyway so at this point I've just put some heat shrink on the cable trimmed it off um, I pushed this um, mount on the bottom tucked it through so it's going to get ready to get soldered on to a little four pin header that we'll actually use just to plug straight in here um, the case is mounted on and we've got the Arduino that will sit in here like so and the we'll just have to put the HX77 on top so um, so that's pretty much done that's ready to go um, on the circuit board I have the tactile very very small oh, focus there you go tactile switch uh, just a little bit of heat shrink on there I'll, uh, I'll either hot glue or super glue that in place um, currently I think I've just got that sitting on pin 2 and it's just nothing more than a, a button you can actually send the same commands as what this button will do via serial which is probably going to be a better better thing for your long term but anyway I'll get into code another in another video so we have a four pin header sitting from VCC, A3, A2 and A1. Uh, can we see that? Let's see if I can look. Look at this dynamic focusing. I've never used that before. That's pretty cool. Anyway, just a four pin header. And as you can see, I put the, three pin, uh, the four pin female version of it onto the, onto, the, uh, onto the load cell. Please focus. There you go. Onto the load cell side. And then I'm going to basically just line up the VCC. See, I've got the VCC and the VCC, and I'm just going to literally just sit this on top. And you're probably going to think, but Mr. Ramjet, that is a ground pin on the end, and you've got that going into an analog pin. Yeah. The um, HX711 board actually only draws about 1.2 milliamps. So I'm going, to, I'm going to keep moving while I'm doing this. Um, it's not a lot of current in all fairness um, where's my helping hands gone it's not a lot of current at all and I have configured that pin that A1 was it the A1 pin yes the A1 pin as a output is an output I think it is as an output and I've configured that to being a um, uh, basically pulled low so I've, I've effectively turned it into a ground pin by pulling it low um, so I have actually created a ground pin and then the A, A3 and the A2 I actually use for the, uh, the data and the uh, signal clock. So convenient, it just sits over the top like that and look at that, just super compact. Oh, a couple of things to check before I do solder this up. Um, there is a, on the HX711 boards, now check your model. They're not all the same, so let me see if I can focus you. No, focus. There we go. That's not super clear. You see the 10 hertz and the 80 hertz here? This little... Let me get a little pair of tweezers. Not super clear. This, this resistor needs to be moved from the 10 hertz side to the 80 hertz side. Now, different models have a little link that you need to cut within here. Um, I... I really like this particular type of board because you can just move those really easily and it's the smallest board. I do have other types of boards here which are, as you can see, much much bigger and are a bit more of a pain in the ass to to actually um, to modify. And you do actually have to slice a, a track on that so if you can get the, what's this brand, XFWHX711 if you can, that's that one's going to fit this anyway. Otherwise, you're going to have to make your own, your own enclosure. So, let's very quickly try and solder this up because I've got three minutes left on my video. And the reason I've got three minutes left is because I have ran out of space on the old phone. So, 
Anyway, so I'm just going to just level that off. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, just quickly solder these up. Do -do 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 -do. So how's your day been going? You had a had a good weekend. Just uh, trim these off. Lift that off there. That was getting annoying. Trim these off here. Just one at a time. That'll do. Perfect. And I'll just re retin that because when you do that, you actually end up exposing the top of the cut, um, the the pin. You end up exposing the center of it to to oxygen, and the um, when the solder re-blobs over the top, you actually get like a like a seal, effectively an oxygen seal. So you're not going to get any rust coming through that. And I'm just basically using surface tension to clean clean the rest off all right perfect so i have now a um yeah i have the board that's ready to go in so where's my little enclosure so i'm going to drop this in place put it in yeah put it in bum first i think that's how i, I designed it and it should just click in you 